being considered by David Fincher. Did it worry you at all that he felt you were totally believable as a sociopath? Yeah. I mean, you know, that does cross one's mind. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, sociopaths are very clever, very attractive people. Do they, you are, they can assume many guises. That's you know, true. I mean, we are drawn to... Now this, this conversation could take a whole other turn <laughs> and everyone would be like... Oh my God, is that whole conversation some sort of deep study? Is she is she just a sociopath? Yeah, no, but I mean, come on, you know, you're playing a convince you're playing a sociopath in a convincing way for a number of months. I mean, you think that doesn't f with your brain? I, you're like, is this because I am a terrible person? Can I pull this off because I am awful? I mean, you think of course are that these the questions that go through your mind? Of course, it crosses your mind. Yes, it does. It doesn't just say I am a great actress. No, because... oh, for, for God's sake, no, that never. No, it means you're just like. I mean, that. If you do you know actors, I mean, does that ever cross anyone's mind? No, it's like, am I a terrible, terrible person? Am I, you know, am I just, you know, you, your job is my job is pretending or whatever it is well, at the end of this conversation that we decide that it is. It's a kind of pretending, and yet you're convincing yourself that it's real, and and sometimes it is totally real and lived and felt and. But, oh, God, I mean, it's very multiple layers. But, yes, boy, does that go through your head. Yeah. And, and then sometimes, I mean, I remember getting this kind of nervous energy when, especially when Amy was in control of the scene, you know, and she was being so manipulative and, and I knew I was doing it well. And I was like, this is so, this is such a precariously scary feeling of being convincing in this role, <laughs> you know? It's, it's, it's uncomfortable. And that's aside from, you know, my research, which involved going to a butcher on La Brea and practicing with my box, uh, my box cutter. Right, for the big slash. For the big slash, meals. yeah. I mean, hell yeah, I went down and sewed some pig carcasses and, and slashed them with deep, you know, deep intensity, not realizing that it was one of these kind of open plan, trendy new butchers. And there were people lining up for their coffees, watching me, you know, slicing through these hanging really? pig carcasses. Yes, I mean... I went in with the question of could I come and I need to see how, you know, a knife passes through flesh. Could you, would you mind if... It didn't even occur to me that people might think, OK, this woman is a total bad crazy. I mean, I got a Dora the Explorer doll, which I, uh, from CVS, and taped her with gaffer tape. You didn't? I did, to a... To a... To a to a stake, so I could sort of, you know, we'd rehearse that scene where Amy murders Desi. Yeah. You know, me and Neil Patrick Harris had been, you know, set up. But Fincher, that was the pièce de résistance of the film for him. I mean, he wanted that scene to be, you know, something so wildly crazy that, you know, it would kind of go down in history, which I think it, it, yes. it did, you know, but it, take, it took tremendous precision. And that was, you know, Fincher, you know, at his kind of most masterful mode you know, everything about that set, you know, literally a bloody bed, the, you know, the wall of the set would raise, the bloody bed would go out, a, a clean new bed would come in, you know, there was um, plastic sheeting over the floor, Neil and I would walk out covered in blood, there'd be a station for hand washing, then a station for body washing, then we'd go and have a full shower, and then we'd reset and start again for two days straight, this revolving door of psychotic for murder. For two days straight? Yeah, but before that, we'd rehearsed all the moves, and then I thought, my God, you know, there's so much resting on this. I need to have a practice alone at home. I couldn't really recruit somebody else, so I recruited Dora the Explorer. And, um, you know, and, and I tied her to a sort of six-foot stake to kind of be the size of Neil Patrick Harris. And then I, um, you know, rehearsed out in the, in the yard of the, of the house I'd rented, which I realized afterwards is, is, is overlooked by many other properties. So what people thought I, would doing, I was doing, if they happened to be, you know, on their balcony at that, that, uh, at that time and saw, you know... Me rolling around looking like I was, I mean, goodness knows. I mean, hump and then murder Dorothy. <laughs> God. You know, I, I, hearing this, uh, it's, it's, I mean. She's, you think I'm a psycho. I, I, I know. I, I actually you. don't. I feel like the, the greatest work gets done when you're People completely oblivious of what it might look like. And you just gotta, you just gotta dive in and do it. But I, yeah. but you describe yeah. all this, and I, I realize like, it to is, be really good at what you do, it must mess with you. I, oh look, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's clearly pretty on the on the borderline of, of crazy, isn't it? Yeah. I, I understand that. I understand that attention to craft and wanting to I went go into a, slice up some pigs. I get that. I'm with you, you know, on that. I mean, yeah. even when I was making Doom, which okay, I've I've now sort of you know probably the nadir of my career. Um, <laughs> Well, that's why I had you here today. We're going to talk about Doom next. Anyway, I even that's, then that's because hour two. I, <laughs> even then, you know, 
I was playing a, you know, a, a scientist in outer space who has to dissect monsters. And I thought, okay, well, this is my chance. And I, um, I was in Prague and I went to the Prague Medical School and, and joined their human dissection class. You didn't. <laughs> and I was so hungover for whatever reason on the day I had to go in there and the kind of whiff of formaldehyde that kind of greets the embalmed bodies. And then, and then- Real bodies. Yes, but my God, is it is it is it amazing to to see that and a, a privilege to see inside a human being. I mean, it's a it's a it's something very beautiful as well as you know. Obviously, if you know, you know, people might say, "Oh God, why? How could you do that?" But because there was a my character Sam Grimm had to at one stage be do make the first incision into one of the monsters with a bone saw. I want I asked if I could see what a bone saw actually did. So I was given my own cadaver <laughs> who I called George. <laughs> he had a large bruise on his head, I hope from a fall. Um and and I and I and I I um I made the incision into his sternum. I mean I can't, now I'm saying this to you, I realise that it is Crazy, but at the time that seemed like you couldn't the just way go get I a could... rump roast and. You I know. know, but it's I know that's what I realize. It's it's absurd, really. I don't know who the director of Doom was, but I'm sure he's now hearing this flattered for the first time. It's you be did the, first the same time. kind of prep for <laughs> Doom. Doom that you did for Gone Girl, <laughs> for David Fincher. <laughs> Absolutely, Andre. Yeah, I hope you're watching. Yeah. That's just what you get when you hire you. <laughs> Yes, what I what they didn't get then was a was a decent American accent, which after then I I realized was going to be the thing I had to, you know, work so hard at. Maybe but that cut was a another time. I'm supposed to be the twin cut right? a few in less that film. Sternums I was the twin of Carl Urban, right? That was the that was the thing that set, that set its you know set the pace with Miranda Frost. Carl Urban was ten years older than me, and I was supposed to be his twin sister. And you're like, okay, I'm just destined to be. Ten years older than I am, and here I am now playing Marie Colvin, and I'm 57. Yeah. So I was, I was sitting next to Kira Knightley on the flight out to Toronto, and she was like, "My God, you're playing 57." She said, "Did you have a load of prosthetics?" I was like, "Fewer than I would have liked, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest." You're like, "That's not, a very rude question." <laughs> Fewer than, yeah. God, if being an actress isn't hard enough, it's like you, you don't have to battle your own personal demons and learn how to use bone saws and buy Dora the Explorer. I'm sure you didn't turn that receipt in, but also <laughs> people think you're expensive. older than you are. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are anyway, you in therapy? But I'd probably be quite a good therapist. You think so? I might be, yeah. You just leave the bone saw behind. <laughs> Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for lots more off camera. And if you wanna see the hour long version of these conversations, I'm gonna give you the secret link. Here it is, offcamera.com. Check it out.